Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. Uh, in last episode we talked about repairing our items and we crafted a new spear. I think in this episode we're going to head back up into the town. Oh, my mini-map is broken. Uh-huh. Let's uh, save and back out. We're going to explore the town a little bit more. Mini-map is important, so if it's blacked out we really don't want that. Still blacked out? Oh well, going to roll with it. Can we collapse it and bring it back? Nope, still broken. Alrighty, well, that's uh, not great. So we talked a little bit, oh here's a house already, I thought we had to go further. Um, we talked a little bit about monster density, I don't know if I ever talked about the way enemies spawn in Cataclysm. So there's two main ways that enemies spawn, they will spawn um, in, what's uh, complicated, uh, mostly we will see a certain level of monster evolution in the world at large and then in specific locations we will see very specific types of monsters. So, for instance, in the prison, which we talked about, there's a robot in there. This is something you're probably not going to bump into on day one, but if you're in the prison, you're going to run into a robot because robots spawn there. Additionally, there are brutes in the prison. Brutes are um, basically just tougher versions of standard zombies that when they hit you, they will knock you back. Um, they can be very difficult to deal with in the early game because going into melee with them is extremely dangerous. Those will not spawn out in the world um, unless they spawn at a specific location like the prison. Similarly, we saw the survivor zombies. They do not just spawn out in the world. That led me to believe, in fact, I can see it here. There's a building that is boarded up. They most likely came out of here. Um, because this is where they probably were set to spawn. So seeing a survivor zombie on day one is probably one of the tougher zombies we're going to see. Um, mostly we're going to be seeing zombies, which are the most basic enemy in Cataclysm. They have a uh, speed that's a little slower than us, health that's worse than ours. Pretty easy to kill as far as things go. Uh, we'll also probably see some child zombies. They are smaller, they take less damage, but they are harder to hit. Uh, we will see, probably on the tougher side of things, we'll see fat zombies and tough zombies. They both have more health than the standard zombie, can be a little bit harder to deal with. Um, so those are a little tricky. Feral runners, which we saw, were the fast zombies. They're pretty weak, but they are fast. Uh, that's their thing. Then uh, that's really it. That's like 90% of what we're going to see out here. Then on the very tip top end of the day one stuff that you're going to see spawning in the world at, as a natural occurring thing in the world is probably shocker zombies, which I don't even think they spawn anymore. I think they were replaced with zapper zombies, which are a lower tier form of them. They're very easy to deal with, um, much easier to deal with than the shockers. Shockers have a long range uh, electricity attack and then we have uh, soldier zombies will occasionally spawn they have a lot of armor they're not particularly dangerous but they have a lot of armor and so uh, we could probably kill one right now and with our current gear actually you know I don't know if we could because I bet our spear would break before we actually killed it um, and then we'd have to engage it in melee we I mean we a hundred percent we're cornered in a building and there's a soldier zombie in the only exit we can kill it it's just really going to hurt us because we're going to take a long time to get through that armor. So that's about all we're going to see. We're pushing up here. We do see a Rottweiler I'm not really concerned about. We'll look where it is. It's far to our east at the rail station. Let's just continue proceeding slowly up into the town. Now keep in mind as you do this, every town, every house you pass has the potential to have enemies in it. So us walking up here, something could see us out the window, come breaking out the window. So definitely keep an eye on them as you pass. I'm really, ah, we see something to the north. I turned off safe mode, I shouldn't have done that. So let's look, it is a zombie child. So again, zombie children, they have low HP, pretty basic, pretty easy to kill. They are small and so they can be hard to hit. And additionally, we get a mood debuff for killing a child in the game. This debuff uh, will go away over time, so the first time you kill a zombie child, unless you have the psychopath trait, uh, what's that trait called? Is it just psychopath? There's a trait um, that makes you not feel bad when you kill enemies. Normally, if you kill a human being or a zombie child, uh, I think are the only two that give a morale debuff. Uh, like if you kill a human being who hasn't been hostile to you, or whatever, um, or even maybe if they are hostile to you, I'm not 100%, I don't really see human enemies very often, um, you will get a debuff for killing a, a survivor. 
Um, if you kill a zombie child, you feel bad because it's a kid. It looks like a kid and you murdered it. Um, I've seen a lot of people complain about this um, because they're like, they're zombies. It shouldn't affect you. I wouldn't care. Um, I don't really buy that. Uh, I am someone who is pretty desensitized to violence and things. But uh, if you put me in a room with uh, a zombie and it looked like a nine-year-old, I couldn't, I wouldn't feel good about that. Like, you know, even if they're pretty clearly zombified, unless they're like missing a face or something that makes them super obviously a monster, it's, it just looks like a kid, right? It literally just looks like a regular nine-year-old. I, I couldn't do that. That's pretty messed up. If you're honestly sitting there going, I could do it. If they're a zombie. It doesn't affect me. There might be something wrong with you. Um, so we haven't seen monster density. All we've seen is that one child zombie, which we could take no problem. Um, and she's very far away. So I think, yeah, this is definitely where the survivors came from. We're going to give this house a wide berth. Um, generally, if you see a building with boarded up windows, sometimes they're totally normal. But like most of the time when I see boarded up windows, it usually means like last I checked, this has been a while. Last I checked, most of the boarded up houses had big packs of monsters in them. We only saw two uh, survivor zombies. So it seems unlikely that there's a huge pack in here because they probably all would have come out. But like, definitely be careful. And again, survivor zombies, uh, like the soldier zombies, they have a lot of armor. And I believe, I haven't checked survivor zombie stats, but I'm willing to bet they're pretty fast as well. So we definitely, definitely want to be careful around them. Um, because there's two of them and they could definitely tear us up real bad um, on day one when we're wearing just clothing. We have no armor at all. All we have is our clothing and we have pretty flimsy weapons. So we've pushed up. We haven't really seen anything. So I think I'm just going to loot the house. If we really wanted to be safe, we could. Mm -hmm. So again, just remember, keep an eye on this and this because this will display nearby enemies. You really should move with safe mode on, uh, which again is the exclamation point. And if we try to move, it will prompt us that, hey, you see an enemy, you should stop moving around. And then it will lock us so we can't move until we deal with that. I turn this off because I find it very annoying and it does get me into trouble. So definitely, definitely move with safe mode on. So let's take a look. We're seeing a big pack over here. This would be from the railway station, it looks like. So going around behind this house is not something we want to do. These are currently right on the edge of our vision. We have slightly better vision than most monsters. So like this fat zombie probably wouldn't see us until we got somewhere over here. Maybe maybe a little bit closer than that. Um, so we are still far enough away that they can't see us. But we definitely don't want to wrap. I was going to go behind the house and make sure there's nothing behind the house. But alas, we have seen a pretty big group. Um, dealing with these guys, again, they're all pretty weak creatures, but they're still a big number of them. And so if we ended up getting in a fight with like three of these at once, it would destroy our stamina. And then if two more came, we would be in trouble. Um, I'm not super concerned about it. We could deal with it if we had to. Uh, and just taking a look around here, we have a swimmer zombie. They're pretty much like every other zombie. They're just flavorful, and then they have a special line of zombies that they will evolve into over time. So like um, basic zombies, as the game goes on, they have a group that they can change into over time, which will make them more dangerous. Children upgrade separately. Uh, survivor, or I'm sorry, uh, swimmer zombies upgrade separately. They have their own line. Uh, fat zombies upgrade separately. They have their own group that they can spawn into. I'm not sure if dogs ever upgrade or not. Um, and then the headless zombies are a uh, fun fact a creature that i added to the game uh, and they have their own line of upgrades as well so the uh, brainless zombie i refer to them as the headless zombies there's three of them they're one of the easiest things you're going to run into on day one they're mostly blind so it's really not a big deal to uh to deal with them they you can stand i think their vision is like four tiles it's not very far at all so um None of these are particularly scary monsters. It's just their density that is concerning. So instead of going back there, let's just head into the house. We're going to close up the windows. Can't close. Some of these windows don't have curtains. It really bothers me that somebody made this without curtains. We talked about that in the last house we went to. Now here's the really tricky bit. Because, again, we, uh, we can see out these windows. And that means that things can see in these windows. 
So if something from down here migrates up and we walk up to the window, they can see us. So an easy trick, which I know I talked about not using crouching because I don't really like it. An easy way to guarantee you don't get spotted is to just shift into crouching because now crouching, nope. Crouching when you get close to it will prevent you from being seen. So like if we just move through the cupboards here, you'll see we can't see out this window so we're not exposed to anything. Nope, close that please. So if we just uh, are careful as we approach the windows, we should be able to shut them without too much concern. And we're gonna just do that for the remainder of the house and close up the windows. And while doing this, this is also good. Be a little careful here. We've already seen the street is mostly clear, but you never really know. Uh, can't close that one either. Really hate that some of these don't have curtains. I don't really understand why you would put in like, obviously, if you were living in this house, you would have curtains on, like, all of the windows or none of the windows. Uh, and I say that as someone who has one curtain on one of the three windows that is in this room. But mostly, you would have curtains on every window. So it just feels like an oversight. It feels like an accident. I'm not sure if it's intentional or not. But I don't like it. Um, so the other benefit is is moving through the house to do that clears out the house because we know there's nothing in these three, four rooms that we've been in. So now we can relatively safely loot. As we stay in this location, our scent will build up in the area, our smell. And so enemies will be more likely to track into the area, but we probably won't be here all that long. So let's check in here. Again, we'll go to crouching just to be careful. Again, I don't normally play this way, but this is a tutorial. So I'm trying to play in a way that I would encourage you to play. So uh, yeah, crouching. Again, let's talk about loot priorities as we go through the house. Any medication is always valuable. So cough syrup, even though that seems like a really innocuous thing, is actually really handy. Um, or rather, it's, it's not super relevant, but when you don't have it and you need it, it's extremely frustrating. So another gallon jug of bleach. This one is full. We'll take that as well as the soap bar. Again, soap lets us clean things. Bleach can be used for crafting primarily. A sewing kit is a good item to pick up. This will allow us to repair clothing items. It has a level three sewing quality. I did not mention this in any of my previous episodes, but there are some big changes planned for uh, 0 0.F. So currently it's, uh, it's February at the end. It's currently the end of February, 2020. I expect 0 0.E will be released in the next month or two. That will be the next stable version. And then for the next year or so, we will be in the experimental, which means it's more up to date than the current stable version, which will be 0.E. And then they will work towards 0.F, which will be the next stable version. So everything in between E and F um, is going to be experimental development. And I happen to know that for F, by the time they release F, they want to redo the crafting system. Um, the well, craft raising skills, grinding skills, that kind of stuff is going to change. They're changing the medical system a little bit with the, the way that health works and the way that we heal over time and treat our wounds is going to change. And sewing is going to get a huge rework. It's something that's been planned for a while. Um, currently, you can sew things very, very quickly, very easily. Um, and we'll talk about this again when we get to actually repairing our gear or crafting our own clothing. But um, sewing is going to change a lot. So anything I say now about sewing is subject to change if you're watching this in the next six months to a year or whatever. Um, this is going to absolutely be something I think for sure is going to change by 0.F. So take that with a grain of salt. But for now, a sewing kit is pretty good. The, uh, they go in order. It's, uh, I think, the bone needle. No, the wood needle is the worst. Then the bone needle. They may even be the same quality. Then a sewing kit, and then a tailor's kit is the highest quality. And tailor's kits are relatively rare at this point in the game. So pick up a sewing kit if you don't have one because it will allow you to do a lot with clothing and with crafting uh, clothing gear. We have a little washing area. We'll check if there's any good clothes. Really not. A mess kit is something that lets you use a battery to cook rather than using a fire. I almost never use these items because uh, making a fire wood is just so much more available. It's way easier to spend one match than it is to, to let your battery charge go. The only time I transition to electronic cooking is when I have a fully functional vehicle. So this to me is not very important, but 
If we look here, compatible magazines, it displays that it uses medium batteries. We can also tell this because it's 500 charge. 500 is the default size for a medium battery. So even if I didn't want this item, I would take the battery um, because it's pretty hard to find a lot of medium batteries. They're one of the ones that are harder. Light batteries are very easy to find. Ultra light are pretty common, but not like as easy to find as lights. Medium and heavy are pretty rare. Medium is more common than heavy in my experience, uh, but I also never really need a heavy battery. So we'll take the mess kit, but I am going to unload the battery. We do this by hitting capital O, or I'm sorry, capital U key for unload, and then I'll select the mess kit. So now we have a medium battery. And the only reason I'm taking it out of the kit is because I'm probably gonna drop the kit in a pile and never use it, but uh, I will wanna be able to search for the battery. I don't wanna have to search every tool that has a battery in it to try and find the right battery. So we're gonna take that, head into the kitchen, see what we've got. Again, all food pretty much is good to take, especially canned goods. Fast noodles, this is basically something that has already been cooked, it looks like. Fresh fast noodles. Uh, So-called ramen, oh, they're ramen. Why are they perishable? Three seasons, okay, so they last for a long time. I was gonna say, ramen has no fat or anything really in it. Flour does contain fat uh, that will go rancid, but because we have flour in the game that doesn't ever go bad, I just assumed that ramen would never go bad. Bird eggs, I don't really care about, but we'll take them. Obviously, we're not going to take anything in red that represents that it is uh, against our um, dietary restrictions. For us, that is lactose intolerant, so we are not going to take that stuff. Definitely take most of this, though. If we can fit it, we can't. So we'll just pick up what we can and leave what we can't carry behind. And we'll head back to base to drop things off. We're going to keep an eye on those zombies as we come and go just to make sure they're not proceeding any closer to us. Um, and we'll head back to base and drop things off. Learning what items to pick up is something that you will... I saw something else. A pit bull? Okay. We'll just keep an eye on that uh, just in case. We'll come back. We'll drop everything in our unsorted pile. This way we can sort it out later um, whenever we're ready to do that. Learning what items to take with you and what to leave behind is something that will come more naturally to you the more you play Cataclysm. Um, but in general, I would recommend just take everything with you. The only thing I would say don't really take is clothing. Um, they're the one thing you're going to find in houses that really don't have any value at all. Obviously, if you're looking for a specific type of clothing, take a look and take it with you if that's what you want. You know, long underwear can be can be nice in the winter months, but we're in spring, so it's really not relevant. By the time we get to winter, we will be able to craft these ourselves. So I'm not really worried about that. Sunglasses can help with the glare outside. So sometimes when we're walking outside, we'll get a message that says the reflection of the sun's glare or whatever is bothering your eyes. I'm not sure what effect that has in game, but I know it's not good. You can remedy that by wearing sunglasses or the like. Additionally, um, in order to use a welder in Cataclysm, you need to have a welding protection for your eyes. Usually you will be able to find something that will work. But when I first started playing, I almost never could find uh, welding goggles or anything like that. And you can actually make them yourself by using deconstructed sunglasses. You need, I think, three pairs of sunglasses. So if you don't know, if you haven't found a welding protection, you might want to pick up sunglasses when you see them. They're a lot more common now, so it's less of a big deal than it was when I started playing. But uh, it's something worth, worth noting, I think. So we'll just head back in here. I don't have much interest in sodas. I usually don't grab sodas. Um, pots are good. I think we already have one at the base. I'm not really sure if we ever got to finding a pot or not. Pots let you heat up food. So like if your food freezes in the winter, you need a pot to heat it up. Um, pots also let you boil things. You'll see it has a lot of qualities here that are used for crafting. This includes crafting clean water by boiling it. That is what the uh, boiling quality is used for. So we will take the pot just because I don't remember if we picked one up. We talked previously about knives uh, having value and when they're, they're most valuable. But for now, we don't really need more of them. Same thing here. We don't really need more knives. So we'll take the bird eggs. We'll take the every, Basically, we're going to take everything. Um, and then we'll reassess when we get back to base. There's really no reason for us to go through now and say, okay, do I really need a fifth jar of jam? I really don't, but I think you can probably convert jam to sugar. I'm not really sure. 
Um, so we probably will take it. So I'm just going to pick everything up because it's a lot easier than going through picking and choosing things. And the junk drawer, again, the main draw here is the duct tape uh, and long strings that are usually at the bottom. I see here we have two light batteries. We'll take those as well. Exacto knives are good for later in the game, but I believe we already have one. We'll take a backup just in case. It's also a proper hammer in there. We don't have a proper hammer, so why don't we take that? That will prevent us from, um, if we look at the hammer, it's, well, we don't have the makeshift hammer with us. We did craft a hammer previously, but having a pre-cataclysm hammer is nice. More bleach, I don't think we need. Uh, I think that's pretty good for this area. We already checked the bathroom. So now we have an upstairs. No, again, we have two downstairs. I really don't like the houses with double downstairs because they lead to the same stairwell. I think that's a bit silly. I also don't like that there's stairs and then a locked door. Um, this is one of the doors that has the auto pry ability. So when I examine it, it tries to pry, but our hammer is not a high enough pry quality. So we'll go activate our lock picks, um, which again, this trains our mechanics. So I don't mind... Let's drop that hammer so that I can just hit A, enter. Oh, there it opened. Okay, give me my hammer back. What's in here? Literally just a locked closet. A little peculiar. Duffel bag is decent storage, but it is pretty encumbering. Oh, it's not encumbering. Look at that. Five encumbrance. Stores 35 liters. Yeah, we're definitely going to take that. Uh, go ahead and wear that. Now, because we have a lot of stuff in our pack... Our encumbrance is quite high. What we're going to do, we're going to take off the sling. Yeah. Which will help. Um, and we're going to just roll with the duffel bag, I think. The encumbrance currently is 23. That is pretty high. But we're only at 33 encumbrance on our torso, so I'm not super concerned. We're going to peek in the basement. Basements often have enemies. Um, usually it's just basic zombies, but there are one or two basements. I think we talked about this. One or two basements that have really scary stuff in them. Um, like one basement has a lot of a particular type of monster, which can be very, very dangerous on day one. So we're just going to cautiously explore. This is not that basement. We would have known immediately if it was that basement. This is the um, game room basement. It's just like, a, I think it was called the game room basement previously, but we actually have a basement now that's like a literal game basement where they have tabletop stuff. Um, this is just was, I guess, the billiards basement, we'll call this. Um, so usually there's an enemy or two here, but they're basic enemies. Usually some alcohol in the fridges. Weird that all the fridges are empty. You can also smash pool tables for rags, if I remember right, or felt, rather, for felt. Um, and then here's the water heater and whatnot. Take some detergent, I guess. We'll check this back, a little cupboard, but I don't think there's anything in here. Yeah. So let's look at the books again. Any book that can train your skills is valuable. You'll learn what books are valuable and which are not. Modern Rifleman is a pretty good book. We'll take that. A Buddy Novel is not a good book. And How to Succeed in Business is, uh, I think, bartering or something, which I don't really care about and never really train that skill. So you'll see we went up and it actually brought us out at the other stairwell. I actually really dislike that. Uh, it's a little bit immersion breaking. So I thought that was originally an upstairs and we were going to clear a second floor, but that's apparently not the case. So we can head back to base and clear out our inventory, keeping an eye on these enemies. There are quite a lot of them. Looks like the dog is migrating towards us, but everything else is, you know, content to stay at the rail station. Looks like that dog may have gotten a whiff of our scent, so we may have to deal with that in the future. I don't like killing dogs in the game. Uh, usually the only time I do it is when I'm needing i need meat i don't like to kill them just because they're hassling me i try to avoid them uh in general so we've cleared that house we're just going to head back out and look at another house the name of the game really is avoidance i know that that's probably pretty obvious um you know i remember playing so dead rising when it came out had a uh, survival mode and essentially okay now we're seeing a survivor zombie a zombie and a zombie child we're going to want to keep eyes on the survivor zombie. Um, this is a different sprite than the other two we've seen. We have saw two female sprite survivor zombies. So this would be a third survivor zombie. It's injured because of the glass. I am concerned at how many of them there are. We don't have any guns, which is the easiest way to deal with them. 
I'm concerned about pressing forward. We could try to engage one just to see. Also seeing a lot of zombie children. There's probably an arcade or a daycare nearby. There isn't. It seems unlikely that they came all the way from the arcade over here. It's possible. Wait a minute. Did I just see a playground, actually? This may be a playground. Uh, if we examine a rope fence. Maybe a tennis court or something. This is probably the park. Okay. Yeah, parks tend to have way too much monster density for my liking. So this is probably the park. It appears to be some kind of tennis court would be my guess. I'm not 100%. Um, it has the double lines. It has a midsection. Yeah, I would guess that's a tennis court. Um, we don't really want to deal with a bunch of kid zombies. That would be a real hassle. Don't really want to deal with the survivor zombies. Because uh, they're very dangerous. Uh, I would like to get eyes behind the house. You know what? Let's back up. We're going to head through this little area here. We're just going to keep an eye make sure nothing's coming at us. And I want to see from this side. Fat zombie, tough zombie. Yeah, I'm guessing they're coming out of this house as well. Actually, looks like they came out of here. I'm worried about the survivor zombie. Frankly. Yeah, let's move up. Have you spotted me now? Survivor zombie has spotted me. That's a problem. We don't have any guns. <sighs> I think we um, try to bait the survivor zombie back to our base and let our NPC fight them. Feral runner as well. There's quite a few enemies here. Well, he's way up there. And they've no longer spotted me? Okay, I don't know. Let's smash the corpse. Still not coming down here, huh? Smash the corpse. Ignore the sounds. Check the bodies. Nothing. Now you've spotted me. Why, why can some of you see me and some of you can't? Like, this guy should be able to see me. It is heavily injured. We may be able to kill this because it's heavily injured. But we're going to back up. You know what? I would love... Can we climb this? We can't. I would love to dart to the other side. Let's go through here. See if we can get them to walk on the barbed wire. And engage them. Okay, he walked on it. We may be able to get them to kill themselves on the barbed wire. Doesn't look like it. Heavily injured. Heavily injured. Hmm. I think we can take him. Not if we miss. Oh, are we are encumbered as well because... No, we're not. We dropped everything. Let's just be careful. You heard wump. Okay. I mean, we're missing a lot. Which is really a problem. Like, we haven't hit him once yet. Okay. Okay, this is a bit silly. We finally hit him. We hit him for seven damage. And he grabbed us, so we break free of the grab and we run back to base. So what we're going to do, they're going to tear up our... Uh, I'm going to walk. I'm going to open this. And I'm going to descend the stairs and hope our NPC comes through to fight. NPC, there you go. So they're fighting, so we can now step up and take some free swings while our NPC is fighting that guy. No, do not attack Lyle Darden. No, do not attack Lyle Darden. Okay, step away just so that we're not getting hit by them. And I would like... He grabbed us. Who hit us? Oh, it's, a sur it's another survivor. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. I just thought this was a regular zombie. I need to turn my sound down. That, that heartbeat gets to me after a while. Okay. And us stepping into range made him target us, which I really hate. So we're going to try running out the front door. And we're just going to shut this. And let our NPC deal with that, because I'm running out of stamina. So we're going to step back, wait to get our breath back, ignore the f sounds. No. No. Let's just watch our s stamina. Listen to our stamina. Sounds like he dealt with it. Excellent work. Are you injured? Examine wounds. 
pretty badly injured, um, which that would have been us, by the way, if it were us fighting. Except he's in a little bit better shape than us because he has some leather gear, uh, which is more durable than our cloth gear. Um, as well as a sweater, which is wool, which is better as well, or felt or whatever, I, I don't know. Um, we He's already pulped the corpses, which is nice. The fat zombie is descending as well. She seems to have followed the other people. So we'll let him deal with them as well. Let's check the bodies. Some knives. Uh, oh, this is my... You died on my unsorted pile. You ruined everything. <sighs> now we have all this crap in our unsorted pile. So, okay. Let's not worry about that right this second. Grab the cash card. Take the candy and aspirin and stuff. Military rucksacks are really good. The fact that this one's in good condition, we'll take that even though it's filthy. We'll clean it later. Uh, as for this stuff, it's going to be hard to know what the survivor zombie dropped because it was on our unsorted pile. It looks like it was mostly dirty clothing. I don't see anything really good that they would have dropped. So I think I'll just use advanced inventory. We haven't talked about this. We will do an episode on this. But for now, we're going to use advanced inventory to pull this stuff out. So I don't have to deal with it um, because it's easy to see in this menu. You can just pull this junk out. Should probably be everything. I think we're good. So I basically pulled things from this pile and dropped them on this pile. So now we can haul the corpse and all this other stuff outside. So I don't have to worry about uh, having a corpse in our building, which I don't like. So let's stop hauling. Check our pile one more time to make sure we didn't miss anything alpha male quarterly I guess we'll take so that fat zombie is going to come in here at some point because she's just too close for us to leave we don't see it anymore there it is it can't see us despite us being right here is a bit interesting so we're going to see if we can uh, kill this thing again fat zombies have more HP than your standard zombie um, but they're not super super scary check for loot Pliers are pretty good. I think we already found a wrench, though, so I don't think that that's super relevant. So let's just drop some of this stuff. So we did take a few hits there, which is not great. Um, our fork spear held up fine, but honestly, we didn't do most of the fighting. Most of that was with the NPC, which we can check their wounds by examining them, um, and you'll see that they're quite pretty injured. Um, not super injured, but not great either. So I'm not sure how quickly NPCs recover health. I assume that it's roughly the same as the player. So based on this, I would say they'll be in fighting condition again after a few days if we were to bandage their wounds and treat them. We will uh, be talking more about treating your wounds when we actually settle in for the night um, because we have taken some damage. It's not enough to really be worried about it. But I want to give a tutorial on how to bandage and how to disinfect and when is the right time to do that and that sort of thing. So for now, we're going to wrap. Um, we did manage to loot a house. We've also cleared two of the survivor zombies, which were some of the main hurdles about us moving up into the town. Obviously, having the NPC companion here saved us a lot. If we had not had the NPC companion, I would have run downstairs and hidden in a corner um, until our stamina came back. Then I would come up and fight. And at that point, we would probably be in an all or nothing fight because if we couldn't kill them, they would probably kill us because we wouldn't be able to get back downstairs through a door and close the door probably in time to, to be safe. Because again, remember, every time you take a hit, your stats go down, which make you less valuable in combat and your pain goes up and that reduces your speed. So we would have been in some trouble, but thankfully we had our NPC companion here. So for now, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Uh, and I'll see you next time.